Tonight, we are digging into Oklahoma's death row cases and concerns surrounding potential wrongful convictions leading to executions. Let's start with the latest execution here in our state, Adam. Well, Wendy, today, death row inmate Anthony Sanchez executed for the 1996 killing of 21 year old Julie Buskin. Fox 25 James and Keefe over in McAllister, where the execution took place. I was inside the witness room as 44 year old Anthony Sanchez was put to death. He used his final words to say his attorneys were the worst ever in the state of Oklahoma and that he was innocent. He didn't say anything about Julie Buskin or her family, only saying that he quote didn't kill nobody. No members of the Buskin family were there inside the witness room today, but Sanchez did have his aunt there. She gave him one final goodbye as he was lying on the table. Now, according to the Department of Corrections in Oklahoma, the lethal injection went smoothly, but the question still on some minds, did the state just kill an innocent man? Anthony Sanchez spent nearly half his life on death row for the sexual assault and shooting death of Julie Buskin, a 21 year old graduate from the University of Oklahoma. The 1996 case went cold for years until DNA linked Sanchez to the crime. A jury sentenced him to death in 2006 and on September 21st, that ruling played out. The execution of Anthony Sanchez has been complete. The official time of death is 10 19 a.m. The execution was delayed for eight minutes while Sanchez and supporters of his innocence waited for a decision by the U.S. Supreme Court asking for a stay, allowing Sanchez's new attorney time to look through his case files, something a federal judge granted him access to just a week ago. For months, the group Death Penalty Action and other advocates fought for Sanchez. He claimed his previous attorney failed him in court and his DNA was planted on Buskin's clothes, and the state never found the gun that killed Julie. But the Supreme Court denied the claim, letting the execution carry out. The Department of Corrections said there was only one minor complication. So it was the pulse ox monitor had malfunctioned, so we, we replaced it. I saw the malfunction happen, where ODOC members replaced the monitor. I also shared some of Sanchez's final words with those who were not witnesses to Sanchez's execution. He thanked his supporters and uh, the death penalty action, he said, for doing their own homework. And then he ended everything by saying thank you. No members of the Buskin family attended the execution, but Oklahoma Attorney General Gettner Drummond spoke for them. Julie um, was murdered 26 years, nine months, and one day ago. And the family has found closure and peace Drummond stood by the DNA and the conviction after advocates and even a state lawmaker called the case to be evaluated. Oklahoma has executed more inmates per capita than any other state in the nation since 1976. Just in the past two years alone, Anthony Sanchez makes the 10th inmate to die by lethal injection. For Fox 25 News, I'm Jameson Keefover. In April, the Court of Criminal Appeals ruled five to nothing against Sanchez, who was seeking to overturn his conviction. He was supposed to have a clemency hearing with the Oklahoma Pardon and Parole Board August 9th, but he waived it. He told his supporters he did not want to go through it again, not confident he would get the vote to get him off death row, and that the process was unfair. Now, last week, his supporters delivered a letter to Governor Stitt from Sanchez where he proclaimed his innocence. Advocates also shared a message from Sanchez last month where he claimed his lawyers did not fight for him and they could have proved his innocence if they had had they would have been able to show my innocence on the following facts there were 49 fingerprints in the car not one matched me the sketch didn't even come close to looking like me none of the eyewitnesses ever identified me the shoe print doesn't fit my foot the shooter was left-handed i'm right-handed no murder weapon was ever found and there have been multiple concerns surrounding the DNA evidence in Sanchez's case, including claims that the DNA was actually his father's. Sanchez's former girlfriend reported the father confessed to the crimes before dying in 2022, but the attorney general says investigators checked the father's DNA too, but the conclusion linking Anthony Sanchez to the case was confirmed. A petition was also filed last year arguing the DNA evidence is questionable since it was handled by an employee linked to several false convictions. We told you last night about Joyce Gilchrist. She was a forensic scientist for Oklahoma City Police for 20 years until she was fired in 2001 for fraud. 
The FBI report found she misidentified evidence or gave improper testimony in several cases, putting people behind bars who committed no crimes. Now, some of those were even death penalty cases. Well, during today's execution, anti-death penalty activists protested outside the governor's mansion. The Oklahoma Coalition to Abolish the Death Penalty, which is made up of some religious leaders, is calling on Governor Stitt to end the death penalty. Advocates say the most important thing needed in order to bring change is awareness. It is our job to tell our neighbors this doesn't just happen outside of the governor's mansion. This happens at the Capitol. This happens at talking to the to your legislator to let them know what Oklahoma is doing. They're aware, but do they really know the impacts it has on Oklahomans? Executing somebody does not fix the problem. This just prolongs the grief that these families have to go through. So who is it helping? Right to be dragged to have this dragged on for 15, 17, 20 years. The families who have to who have experienced trauma from the crimes that were committed in the past they're continuing to have to relive that and relive that. So unfortunately, until people realize the implications that the death penalty has in Oklahoma and on people, it will continue. Administration included a silent vigil and ended with a circle prayer. As we continue to cover this here, Anthony Sanchez, the 10th person to be executed in Oklahoma since executions resumed in October of 21 after a six year moratorium. Four inmates were executed between October of 2021 and February of 2022. Now that is when a federal trial began with dozens of death row prisoners challenging Oklahoma's controversial execution protocol. The judge ruled that protocol constitutional in June of 2022. One month later, execution dates were set for 25 death row inmates with an execution scheduled nearly every single month from August of 2022 through December of 2024. And three inmates were executed between August and November of 2022. Now to this year in January, Attorney General Gettner Drummond filed a motion just days after he was sworn in to slow the state's execution schedule. The Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals granted that motion on January 24th, pushing back several execution dates. And three executions have taken place in 2023 so far. Scott Eisenberg in January, Jermaine Cannon in July, and today, Anthony Sanchez. We continue. There are now 37 inmates awaiting execution in Oklahoma. The next execution set for November 30th for Philip Hancock. After that, James Ryder on February 1st, Michael Smith on April 4th, Wade Lay on June 6th, and no execution dates have been set for any other inmates. While that next execution is set for November 30th, there is a man on death row that could have his case updated before then. Fox 25's Peyton May brings us the status on Richard Glossop. Richard Glossop was set to be executed in May, but the Supreme Court stepped in and put a hold on the proceedings. Now the status of an Oklahoma case that's gained national attention is on pause until October 1st when the court convenes. The person they executed today, they tried to throw some doubt in that. Evidently, there wasn't enough doubt to stop that execution. But in the case of Richard Glossop, his has been stopped 10 times. He's had 10 death penalty dates, three last meals. Representative McDougall has been leading a coalition of lawmakers fighting for a retrial of Richard Glossop's case, a decision that's now up to SCOTUS. They can either refer it back to the state, which it goes back to the Court of Criminal Appeals, who worked against him uh, the last time, and they could say everything that uh, you, you looked at before, you need to relook at it and come up with a different decision. The highest court in the nation could also decide to take on the case themselves and ultimately hand down a recommendation to our state. While Glossop was denied clemency by the deadlocked Pardon and Parole Board and faced unsuccessful appeals, there's one unusual but critical legal advisor who is standing with him, Attorney General Gettner Drummond. The AG has filed paperwork and said we cannot trust the first two trials. He didn't say he was innocent. He just said we cannot trust those trials. Richard Glossop was convicted of a 1997 murder for hire scheme that led to the death of Barry Van Trees, his former boss. Another man, Justin Sneed, admitted to killing Van Trees after Glossop promised to pay him. We will continue to keep you updated when the Supreme Court makes a decision. For Fox 25 News, I'm Peyton May. While there are death row cases like Glossop's that many see as questionable, being exonerated is quite difficult. But it has happened a few times in Oklahoma, including earlier this week. Glenn Simmons is the longest serving exonerated man in the U.S. On Tuesday, a judge dismissed his murder case of nearly five decades. Simmons was 22 when he was charged with first degree murder in the 1974 death of Carolyn Sue Rogers. He faced the death penalty, but his sentence was changed to life in prison 
in 1977 after a Supreme Court ruling. Simmons spent 48 years in prison until July of this year when an Oklahoma County judge set the case for a new trial, allowing Simmons to be released on bond. On Tuesday, a district judge dismissed his case with prejudice, meaning his charges cannot be refiled. Judicial leaders say there was just a lack of evidence. Validation and vindication is, is finally happened, you know, and it's a lesson in, in, in resilience and tenacity. And, you know, when you, when you, when you know you're free, when you know you're innocent, you stick with it. Don't ever stop. Don't let nobody tell you that, it, you know, you can't, it can't happen because it really can. Simmons is the 195th person exonerated after being sentenced to death since 1973 and the 11th in Oklahoma. Six of those exonerations originated in Oklahoma County, tied with two other counties for the second most death row exonerations of any county in the United States. A lot of that has to do with former DA Bob Macy, once called one of the deadliest prosecutors in the nation by Harvard's Fair Punishment Project. Macy, the Oklahoma County DA from 1980 to 2001, was responsible for 54 death sentences later. Prosecutorial misconduct was found in one third of his death penalty cases. Courts reversed nearly half of his death sentences and three of the people Macy helped to convict were later exonerated and freed from death row. Macy was also accused of conspiring with Joyce Gilchrist, the forensic scientist who often gave improper testimony. Vox 25 spoke with some of those exonerees back in 2009. There are a lot of people who believe that Bob Macy put Joyce Gilchrist up to this. Do you agree or disagree? Absolutely. He retired because this was blowing up in his face and it was making him look bad. They were riding each other's coattails up into the stars, making names for themselves. It's not just us three. There were 196 cases identified in the Joyce Gilchrist case that are problematic, in which she was the only witness against those people. We now know that she is a liar. She's a perjurer. Gilchrist's testimony needed for 23 of Macy's death row convictions. He died in 2011. Several current death row inmates were tried under Macy. He was the prosecutor in the cases of Richard Glossop, Emmanuel Littlejohn, and Alfred Mitchell. Now, that was your big story breakdown. You can find more about death row cases in Oklahoma, including inmates who were recently sentenced to death on OKCFox.com. And if you missed any part of this big story breakdown, you can find it all on our YouTube channel. Just scan the QR code on your screen or search OKCFox.